Hello everybody and welcome back to a PSVR 2 news recap where today it's a bit of a different one. We're only covering, I don't know, two or maybe three things uh, as opposed to the normal like seven that we usually cover but these are some topics that we can really sink our teeth into for the most part and i'm really excited to talk about one of them because it's been building up to for quite a while and then the other two one of them is pretty standard and the other is quite exciting but we already knew it was coming anyway but before we get into it please feel free to like and subscribe all that good stuff you know the drill anyway the first thing we're talking about today is gamescom opening night live which is tonight and then the rest of gamescom is happening this week usually we get some vr demos i feel like behemoth might be there and a couple of the flat screen demos that i'm really excited for like little nightmares 3 will be there but for the vr space we usually get a couple of studios bringing their a game with booths and some vr and ar and xr companies so those will all be there and then maybe we might get an announcement or two for a vr game who knows i know the batman arkham vr game is going to be here uh, in some capacity at opening night live so that's really cool um hopefully we'll get some cross-platform multi-platform vr games there shown off but Tune into Opening Art Live. It's always a load of fun to have a look and see what gets announced. I'm personally really excited for everything there, Little Nightmares being one, and also Tarsia Studios' new IP, who were the original developers for Little Nightmares. They're creating a new horror IP, and I'm excited to see what that is. Um, but for VR, mostly stuff we know about there, but a couple of things could be announced. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, this next topic, I need to kind of credit Sean Longley here, who is, I think, a subscriber of the channel and also has a Twitter where they repost a load of PSVR 2 stuff. Um, and his quote retweeted a post from an account called Nothing But Gaming, who have said that Welltread Semiconductor, the Taiwan-based semiconductor manufacturer, have said that orders involving video game consoles will recover in the third quarter, including initial shipments of the new PlayStation 5 model. This is, of course, the PS5 Pro, which has been rumored for quite a while. The big source for this is a website called moneydj.com and a lot of this is in Chinese uh, but for what we can kind of garner from this in terms of PSVR 2 and the PS5 Pro, the PSVR 2 could get a boost in terms of maybe ray tracing or a boost in terms of visual quality and maybe reprojection. So the PS5 Pro is definitely coming from everything we can see on the supply chain. I mean, we have a load of console movement at the moment. The Switch 2 is getting ready to launch. Really excited for that. The Xbox handheld has been floating around for a while and the PS5 Pro, of course. So there's a, a lot of supply chain stuff happening. Even in the VR space, the rumors around the next Apple Vision lineup is kind of floating around. So we're getting a load of information. And the one specific for this is that yeah, we could definitely see enhancements for the PSVR 2. Like we saw when we moved from the PS4 to the PS5 with the original PSVR, there were some improvements in terms of image quality and in terms of frame rate. And I think frame rate will be a big one for me. Of course, the image quality, fantastic. I've played some PC VR games that can run better than PS5 and they look so, so good. So we'll be getting up to that level. But also the reprojection should be maybe be solved there might be a chance that with the higher hardware games like horizon call the mountain like gt7 can be run maybe native 90 hertz instead of reprojected 60 to 120 which is really exciting and that might push me over the edge to at least trying out a ps5 pro if not buying one because gran turismo 7 especially those reaction times are really needed and reprojected is fine in motion for that game but sometimes you can see the ghosting a little bit and i think it would be really beneficial to have and to experience horizon call the mountain at a native frame rate would be awesome as well so hopefully with this leak we can see there's a lot more power being brought into the ps5 pro so yeah all lies on the future and for the potential sony showcase which is rumored for september in that showcase we should get a couple more psvr2 games there as well i'd hope every state of play that we've had so far has had at least two so maybe we could be looking at like three or four for the showcase if there is one so hopefully if that does happen we'll be streaming it here on the channel or i might join without parole again if i get invited that was amazing last time for the state of play so we'll have to wait and see and lastly, in a big surprise, Better Than Life Studios have actually shown off that the Kayak VR Mirage multiplayer, which we've been waiting for for a while, which is two-player multiplayer, is in beta on Steam and shouldn't be too long till it comes over to PS5. You've got footage of that on screen now, which looks fantastic, by the way, in the Antarctica map in the day, which is a fantastic looking map heading into the ice caves. And you have a player called uh, King Jets in the front and then the POV camera going along that's gonna be so cool to try out and they attached on the reddit post for it a kind of description of what's going on and their approach going forward for the game because they're they're not ready to give up on it yet it's they're kind of their vr baby really and 
they're pushing support for it and, and making more content, which is exactly what we wanted. People were scared that the game was abandoned. It is clear that that's not the case. The poster of the original post on Reddit have said, we've been teasing you with it for a while, but we're finally ready to launch multiplayer in beta on Steam. Support for PS5 should soon follow, but we want to gather some real world data on how multiplayer performs first, which is completely fair. Development on it started over a year ago, and as it turns out, making a VR game with a character holding a paddle in a kayak, all physics based, work in multiplayer is no joke. However, we think it's completely worth it as we've had a blast during our testing and can't wait to hear what you think. We're taking a more iterative approach to the development this time, building on our learnings from the launch of Soka Valley. This means not everything you may expect might be in yet, mainly the race mode and the physics objects like the beach ball and other inflatables. Physics objects have turned out to be really difficult, so although it's definitely on our list, we've decided to not let this stand in the way of release now. Proximity voice chat and cross-platform are also not in in brackets yet. So we should see proximity chat come in, although I'm completely fine with just using Discord or PlayStation parties for it, to be honest, at the moment, especially since you're just going to be doing this with friends, I think. But it would be cool and immersive to have that, so I'm never going to say no to it. And cross-platform, I do think, is not a necessity, but something that really should be there eventually and hopefully soon. So we'll see that coming out. They go on to say, however, the core of being able to kayak around together should provide you with the experience you were looking for when you think about multiplayer. They also now have a Discord multiplayer channel that you can go and talk in as well. So this is out now on Steam. If you want to go and grab it, I'm going to wait for the PSVR 2 version of multiplayer and grab that and then test it out with some friends. It is only up to two people, I think, but it is going to be absolutely worth it. And I'm really excited to see where this game goes forward with new environments and when they get all these little bits working in multiplayer like proximity voice chat and cross-platform it's going to be fantastic but they got the full body avatars like they did in the last update that um, then mirrored for the other player in the kayak which is awesome but i'm really excited to test this out because these devs are actually wonderful right that was going to be our last piece of news but something really weird and something that you need to take with a mountain of salt not a grain of salt a mountain is what i'm about to tell you right now and this is from five days ago from the alien isolation subreddit by a user named Arik. This is called Leak Alert, Alien Isolation 2 and more incoming. And this is something that might actually be able to be confirmed by later on today, maybe, because I think there's some references to games common here. And there is something maybe PSVR 2 focused here or VR focused. So they say, hey everyone, I've just learned some info from a former Creative Assembly developer. Creative Assembly is the dev team before Alien Isolation. I met in a layoff community. Here's the scoop from our conversation. Alien Isolation 2. Three years into development, it continues Amanda's journey, ignoring the events of Alien Blackout. They also say they got information about a movie tie-in with a tie-in game for Romulus, including multiple references and Easter eggs from Isolation, and there's a buzz about potential sequel integrating more of Amanda's storyline to it. They also say there's a 10-year anniversary treat. One of these is an official VR release and a remastered version of the original Alien Isolation to celebrate its anniversary. Both games were outsourced by 20th Century Studios. Creative Assembly is not involved in these. And lastly, a big reveal is planned. The sequel, remaster and VR game are likely to be announced together around the October anniversary with a possible teaser at Gamescom. The remaster should arrive near the 10 year mark. The VR game is expected in 2025 to avoid competing with Alien Rogue Incursion and the sequel in 2026. The team has hinted on Twitter, including a reunion post saying Sevastopol lives. So there's a little bit of evidence there at the end with that Twitter post. However, I'm kind of mixed on this. Not the idea of it. Fantastic. Please give us Alien Isolation in VR. It's one that I've been asking for for ages. So that could possibly be something that happens if this ends up being true that would be fantastic and i'm assuming it would be on psvr too but again this is quite a big thing and especially with alien rogue incursion we could take two views on this one view could be that this is why alien rogue incursion is more action oriented so it separates itself from the isolation vr version if that happens because then you've got an alien style action game and an alien isolation style stealth game with you know the alien isolation port so that they'd be very different an alien isolation is already an established game it's a fan favorite it's loved so you're not going to get confusion between the two from a consumer standpoint it would make sense but also would it make sense to have two back-to-back -back alien vr games year on year i'm not sure if that's a decision they would make but again that's something we might be able to find out by today if there are teasers for this at gamescom this will hold water but as everybody is saying in the comments i'll believe it when i see it one more thing that points to this being fake is the fact that 
Disney had a 1.1 terabyte leak in July. And even though 1.1 terabytes is nothing compared to everything they have there, Aliens Fire Team Elite 2 was listed in there. So that is an alien game that's featured there and it wasn't mentioned at all in future plans. Anything about, you know, Alien Isolation, Remaster or VR port or even this tie-in game they're talking about. So yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence of more leaning towards this is fake rather than this is real. But again, it might be an easy one to verify because it's Gamescom today. If we see a teaser, this could be real. I'm betting that it isn't, but I want to throw it in here today because more likely than not, we'll find out today whether this is accurate at all. So don't get really excited for this because it probably isn't real, but if it is, I'm all on board. So thank you all for joining me. This has been a little bit, not of a shorter news recap, but less topics because we could dig in a little more. Really excited to see what improvements we get on the PS5 Pro with the PSVR 2 and also the Kayak VR stuff as well. It's of course awesome. And I'll be tuning into Gamescom. I won't be streaming it, uh, but I will be sitting there, you know, eating some food, enjoying myself and just taking it in because I always love this time of the year where there's so many gaming showcases. Summer is always awesome for it. And coming to the end of summer is, is when things really start to ramp up and I'm really excited for the future. So thank you all for watching. Thank you to our patrons and YouTube members, Luke Bentley, Phil Irving, Hazit Mirza, Ace Gamer, Hippie Pickle, Jin007, a license to chill, Sun WTF, Fat Control, Jason Barker, Lamar Hall, Jordi Bansma, Lemon64K, Callum Tierney, Mischievous Marco, The Underground Game Cat, Brian East, Alajimbe D2Y, Underground Stranger Game Cat, The Game Cat, Andrew Ehrenreich, Mark Smith, X King X Ping, Jaws of Ash, The Legacy of Game Cat, Hooked Worm, The Hoosier Game Cat, Outcast VR, Prophecy 777, Test Rate Review, Salvador, Wade, FNCS Kieran, and Sean Krim. Whew, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.